work it, make it, do it, make sense. I've got Mark along. I'm going to give him a really easy time, honest. That's what I told him. But uh, I, I thought we'd get together, have a chat. And we're going to ask the architect pretty much, hopefully, all the questions that you've got. So I think the next slide is yes. Uh, we've rehearsed this, obviously. So uh, <laughs> there's a hashtag. If you can tweet it, I've got my tech. And hopefully, the internets are working in here. So if you can just send the questions through to me. If we're chatting and you want to call bullshit, please do. I'll uh, quite happily do that on your behalf. If you want to take the conversation down a different tangent, please do as well. But actually, I think we probably should ought to start with Jigsaw, Java 9. The events of the past couple of weeks have been really easy for you, I can, I can tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so, uh, I, I, I get to talk now. It's not a pen and teller thing. Good. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Already. Thank you. <laughs> so earlier this week, the, uh, the Java community process, the executive committee, voted. And they voted not to proceed with uh, uh, the, the vote in front of them. Uh, so what's your plan now? Where from here? So what, what, what they voted uh, was, was not to approve the public review draft at this time. Um, we have 30, well, no, we have 20, 26 or 27 days to submit a revised draft, and then if we do that, they'll take another two weeks to vote on it. Uh, the, my, my plan is to, is to work on a few key issues that are of concern to some executive committee members. Uh, the, you know, those, those three high level, you know, high, high level those three are, one is there was, this, there was this raging issue, was this raging issue about automatic module names, which we just recently resolved, and some members of the executive committee went just want a little more time for that to bake. Okay. Uh, another is there's some there's some basic <laughs> what, there's some questions that they're they're really legal questions uh, essentially about what it means to license a, a custom linked image. If you link if you, if you if you get a full JDK um, and then you link a custom image that has just a subset of the modules plus maybe some of your own code, what's the licensing for that? You know, is Oracle, Oracle going to come and like charge you ten bucks? Or, something stupid. No, no, the intent is absolutely, you can, like, you can do that, you can redistribute it, but there were, there were some details in the spec that we needed to iron out. I proposed text for that. I'm guessing that some other company's lawyers need, need a little more time to review that. Fine, no problem. And there's also this issue around the, um, there, there, were, there were some, qu some questions from the Eclipse ECJ team, you know, the, the other Java compiler in the world, um, and they, they try really hard and they actually do a great job of you know, only, only, only implementing what's in the JLS, right? They don't read Java C source code. They, they only, only read the JLS. They want a spec that's complete enough so they can do an, impl an independent implementation. And some stuff was missing, so Alex Buckley has been working with them to, to come up with revised text, and we hope to resolve that in the next few weeks. So we'll, we'll work out those, those three things, maybe a couple of other, you know, small open issues. Uh, and I think that, that'll satisfy so, some EC members, but not yeah. all of them. But so we're not going to satisfy them all, are we? No. Um, no. So there's been uh, a big thing talked about, uh, notably in your blog post, is that mm -hmm. we don't need everyone to agree, do we? Uh, the JCP does not mandate consensus, uh, and there's a good reason for that, and this is, ex this is basically an exemplar of why consensus is not mandated. Some, sometimes members of expert groups come in, and they're only looking out for the narrow interests of themselves or their employer, and I think that's what happened here. So. Uh, in, you know, in, in brief, I, th I think the, the EC members who, who won't be satisfied by fixes to those three issues I just described, they, they fall into three, into three buckets. One, one is some, some of them are very technically minded, and even though this project has been going on for years and years and years, they, they chose this point to wake up, look at it, and decide, oh, uh, you need to implement this other feature too, and we're going to vote no unless you do it. It's like, well... Uh, no, this is not a technical review. The executive committee is not a technical review body. Uh, now is a really bad time to be giving fundamental technical feedback. Where were you a year ago? Uh, the, the second group are, you know, they're, they're a bunch of EC members who, they, they just, they like consensus. They want everybody to be happy. Um, and they're only going to be happy with consensus. But consensus in, in this expert group will mean doing everything that Red Hat wants. Uh, and then, of course, there's Red Hat, and Red Hat's not going to get what it wants. Uh, sorry. 
uh, you know, the, the Red Hat has been advocating very strongly for what amounts to what, I, what, I've, well, what, I've, what I've been calling a meta-module system. It's, it's, not a, it's not an approachable module system for everybody to use, which was one of the primary goals of this entire effort. Rather, it's a toolbox that module system experts and rocket scientists who implement app servers can use um, you know, to, 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 to enhance their applications that exist today. Uh, well, that's an interesting thing, uh, but it's most likely not going to be approachable, and from the standpoint of acting as responsible stewards of the Java platform, it would be a really bad move to, to not only delay nine to do that, which would take a year or two, uh, but to put that into the Java SE platform, which I'm sorry, it, ha it serves many different, you know, many kinds of users other than people who implement app servers. So, no, we're, we're not going to put what ri could risk becoming the EJB2 of module systems into the Java platform. Not going to happen. So, why do you think there is so much angst around Java 9 and Jigsaw? There's, there's a lot of angst. I think basically for two reasons. One is uh, people don't yet understand um, the key benefits. Um, and the other is there, there, are just a, there are a lot of misconceptions flying around, partly because of fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's been You mentioned by benefits, others. but what are the benefits? So, jigsaw elevator pitch, here we go. Um, two, the two, the two, two, two main features, strong encapsulation, you can, you can hide internal APIs. Uh, second main feature, reliable configuration, a, a module says what other modules it depends on, you don't just keep throwing stuff on the class path and hope, and, until it works and then hope that that works long term, <laughs> which of course it usually doesn't. So the, from those two features we get a bunch of benefits. One is everybody gets a chance to escape from class path hell. Um, you know, we, we're all familiar with class path hell. Gee, wouldn't it be nice if, if a jar file only, you know, if the code in a jar file could only see the stuff that it's supposed to see rather than every other random thing that happens to be in your system. People who maintain libraries have the ability to hide internal APIs so they can involve their, evolve their internals knowing that they will not break the code that uses those libraries. We can modularize the platform itself so we, we, which, which is critical to bringing the Java SE platform to the cloud, to smaller devices. I mean, the, the cloud is, it, it, might, it might not be obvious that it's important to, for the cloud, but believe it, or, you know, believe it or not, space is important to the cloud if your Docker image you know, bloats by a factor of four or five because you're carrying the entire JDK when you only need a little part of it. Well, that's a waste. Uh, and then finally, it's, and this is the indirect benefit that's, uh, that's been the hardest to explain is Modularizing the platform with a real module system is a, it's a big down payment on the future evolution of the platform. It allows us to improve the, the security of the platform, the integrity of the platform, and the performance in ways that we're only beginning to leverage in this release and will be going much further over time. Sure. So there are the benefits, but yeah. uh, I've heard lots of different things uh, that are not so positive. Yeah. So what would you say the, say, top 10 misconceptions that you've heard ten. about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask, I have a list. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> so just, you know, just imagine Dave Letterman, I've got my, my favorite hot beverage here, and somebody with a bra breaking glass effect, so I'll, I'll stand, stand up for this part. Top, top 10 misconceptions about Jigsaw and Java 9. Number one, Maven doesn't work on Java 9. Let's ask somebody who should know. Robert Schulte, PMC chair of the Apache Maven project. Maven 3.0 and later runs fine on Java 9. If there are issues, they're always plugin related. In such cases, try the latest plugin version. Last I, last I checked, there's still a, there, there's a, a bug in the Surefire plugin, um, but most others that we've looked at anyway uh, seem to work. The Surefire plugin, there's an issue for it. So, so hopefully somebody will, will, will work on that soon. So now Maven does work on Java 9. That, that's, that statement's incorrect. Number two, my favorite library framework or tool doesn't work on Java 9. Well, no, actually, quite a lot of things work on Java 9, just to give you a little list here. Maven, as I said, Ant, JUnit, TestNG, Makito, uh, Eclipse IntelliJ, NetBeans, TIP, those, those work on Java 9, CGLib, Java Assist, uh, every, all, those, all the different logging frameworks, Hibernate Validator, Netty Jersey, Tomcat TIP, Lucene, I think Solar does too, Spring Boot, Spring Framework, Clojure, more, more stuff that's not on this, this list and more to come. We've spent a, a fair bit of effort over the last couple of years reaching out to the maintainers of popular libraries and frameworks and tools to work with them, encourage them to test on nine, 
and you know, come to us with questions on the jigsaw dev, li dev list and we've given them advice and assistance. So, uh, no, a lot of stuff already does work on Java 9 and I think around 9GA or shortly thereafter, a lot, a lot more stuff will. So that's not true. Number three, I'll have to modularize all my code and wait for all the libraries that I use to be modularized before I can use Java 9. Wrong. The class path is still there, and the class path works great. You have a class path application today that runs on Java 8 or an early release. It should work on Java 9 as long as, well, a few things like it doesn't use in hidden internal APIs and stuff like that, which I'll get to in a minute. Number four, existing module systems such as OSGI don't work on Java 9. Wrong. The class path is still there, and it works great. Uh, the, if OSGI doesn't, you know, if OSGI doesn't use internal APIs, you put it on the class path, you run it, it'll work. If it doesn't work, that's a bug in the JDK that we will fix. Um, and we actually have tested the, 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 the popular OSGI frameworks, and guess what? They work. Okay, great. Number five, Jigsaw will split the Java community just as Python 3 split the Python community because code on the class path can't make use of modules. Wrong. Code on the class path can read all of the public and protected types and elements of all resolved modules. We've, we've gone to great pains to make all of that work. So you can have, you can have code on the class path refer to modules, um, and, and, and that just works. You can gradually migrate an application over time if that's what you want to do. Uh, not only that, if you maintain a library or a framework that you ship as a jar file, you can convert that to a module. It can be used on, on 9 as a module, and on earlier releases, just throw it on the class path. The fact that it's a module will just be ignored by early releases because, well, those early releases don't know what modules are. Number six, the strong encapsulation of platform classes is the only roadblock to ni Java 9 adoption. So because they're strong encapsulation, a bunch of internal APIs that people use, despite the fact that we've been telling people not to do that for 20 years, a bunch of internal APIs that people used to use are gone. I mean, they're still there, but they're hidden. You can get to them with a command line flag if you absolutely have to, uh, but, but they're hidden. Uh, this is not the only hurdle. There are many other changes in Java 9 that, are, that fall into the theme of, of, of investing in the platform for the future. The fact that rt.jar is gone. It's been replaced by a, by a much more efficient format. RT, you know, zip files are about the worst possible format for a bunch of class files in the base of the system. We've changed the layout of the, of the entire system image to, to, to get rid of a bunch of technical debt. We've deprivileged a bunch of system classes to improve security. This means that some system classes are loaded by a different class loader rather than the bootstrap class loader. There is code that's sensitive to, uh, <laughs> sensitive to that, and you know it's just going to be part of upgrading. We changed the version string format. Sorry, the old one was was just just too problematic, and that has affected some code as, code as well. So there are you know with every every major release, there are sometimes breaking changes in nine. There's a bit more than usual but this is important for the evolution of the platform. Number seven, SunMisk Unsafe is going away in JDK9, and that will break lots of things wrong. SunMisk Unsafe and a small number of other critical internal APIs that we know are used by lots of existing code, they're still there, they'll stick around, we're working on making supported proper replacements for them that will be part of the standard API. Uh, after those replacements have been around for a release or two, then SunMisk Unsafe will go away. Number eight, Jigsaw is going to solve the multiple versions problem. No, Jigsaw is not going to solve the multiple versions problem, um, at least not in this release. Number nine, Jigsaw sucks because it's not going to solve the multiple <laughs> versions problem. It's horrible. What's the point? Why bother with Java 9? I'm going to stay on Java 8 for the next 20 years. Um, Jigsaw doesn't solve the multiple version problem because if it did, you probably wouldn't like it. There, there, there are two, two aspects of this. One is the behavior of a lot of well-established APIs that have anything to, to do with class loaders will change in incompatible ways. Um, this, is, this is a bit subtle, but it's very real. You know, things like resource lookup. They don't work like they used to. Any code that, that makes assumptions about class loader relationships, not going to work like it, like it used to. So, uh, so there's that. The other thing is, to solve the multiple version problem, 
in the module system, we need build tools to solve the multiple version problem. Does, what, what does Maven do about multiple versions? Mm, no, uh-uh. So the build tools need to be enhanced in a very serious way, in a more serious way than they've been enhanced al already for what we're doing now in order to support multiple versions. So, sorry, I, at least I don't think Jigsaw sucks because it's not going to solve that. We can solve it under future release. We've laid, laid the foundation for that. Number 10, modularizing my existing large software system is going to be easy. No. There's one thing the OSGI folks are correct about. Modularizing an existing software system is really hard. It took us like nine years to do the JDK. Um, only do it if you really think there's going to be a huge benefit. By all means, you're writing a new system. Use modules from the start. An old system, it's, it's, it's a, an investment you want to think carefully about. All of this stuff is false. Okay. Uh, All that right. was a little longer than I was hoping. Sorry. But never mind. So we had, there are lots of other questions. <laughs> there are. Right, yeah. And there's a lot of other topics. And there uh, there, you've got a session later in the, the yeah, DevOps. Yeah, one, one today, you, one tomorrow. So yep. absolutely, if you've got more questions about modules, the man himself is here. Please do come and ask them. Yeah. And I'll be hanging around, at, hanging around uh, at the Oracle booth, too. Absolutely. Now and then. But Java 9 is not the destination, is it? It's not, what's beyond nope. Java 9? And uh, from a language point of view, what do you hope from for the future? Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we've been working on in the Valhalla and Panama pro projects. Um, I, you know, I think that Va Valhalla is going to be, an, a, be the next big step for, uh, for the entire platform by just vastly improving memory consumption, by fixing some long-term warts in the language, the, you know, the division between primitive types and reference types that were, you know, from a, technolo a technology standpoint, were the right decision in 1995. Um, you know, today when memory accesses are a couple of orders of magnitude longer, n not the right thing. Right, and uh, obviously the, the, it's, Java is bigger than the, just the language. Yeah. And usually Java releases, so nine's mm -hmm. got Jigsaw as its big headline release, five yeah. obviously are generics. What do you think tens big headline feature is going to be? Well, that kind of depends on when 10 is. <laughs> uh, politics aside. So, uh, po so politics aside, so, so some of us who've been working on the JDK have been giving serious thought to the whole, the, the whole release cadence issue. I mean, the, these big feature-driven releases where we, where we say, okay, this big feature or these three biggish features are going to be in this release and we're going to keep delaying the release until we get them all done um, is it, sort of a 1990s uh, methodology and in the modern age, uh, for Java to keep up, I, I think a, a, a faster cadence would be a really good thing. Where we, where where we where where we do something that's time bound, uh, we ship on a on a fixed schedule. If something's ready, it goes. If something's not ready, it waits until the next one. And a release becomes something that you you look at the calendar for. And then, if you're interested in the feature, you figure out well re which release is it, is is it going to be in. So, what if what if Java released every year? Good idea. How about six months? Six months, anybody? You know, including features, API changes? Oh, people, how, how many people prefer three years? I'm not getting, not getting much data out of this crowd. Oh, well. I, 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 well, I'm sorry. I, I obviously go off to a lot of different conferences, and I talk to a lot of different types of developers, and I'm talking to people who run Node, Ruby, hell, even PHP, and I'm envious about the advances they're making in their languages. Oh, yeah. And I come back to my home, and I think, come on. I know, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I, I, rapid cadence. And if we switch to a more rapid cadence, you know, if, t if 10 is six months from nine, then 10 might be a boring release, but that's okay. Maybe 11 or 12 or 13 will, will be exciting. So, Java aside, yeah. what's your favorite JVM language? Clojure. And do, do you think that uh, we're going to ever move away from Java, maybe to something like Kotlin, something simpler? Mm, I, I, think, I think having many languages on top of the JVM is a great thing, but I think, I think Java, as long as we, we continue to invest in it, um, ha has quite a bit of a future ahead of it. Okay. So we're, we're coming to, to time here, but I'd be, uh, I'm quite interested in the man, the myth, and the legend. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> you've, uh, uh, you, you've done uh, a PhD yourself. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was on garbage collections that you've yep. put to work very, actually you didn't use it at all, it's fine. <laughs> but if you had your time again, yeah. what would you invest your time in doing a PhD now? Uh, other spaces in people doing academic research now that you think, hey, this area is underexplored? Well, my, my high level answer to that question um, 
is it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Um, any, anybody in the audience or listening to this, you know, considering doing, you're doing a PhD, um, don't, don't worry so much about uh, advancing the field. If you're going to do a PhD, it's going to require a tremendous amount of dedication and effort. Pick a set of ideas you're passionate about, because if you don't have a passion, then you're, just, you're wasting your time. You're going to have a miserable several years. Uh, it's, it's not worth it. In terms of what needs more investment, um, I, an irony of my own PhD is when I started out, um, programming language design and implementation was in fashion. By the time I finished, it wasn't. And so the academic job market was even more dismal for me than many of my, uh, many of my fellow students. Uh, but I, I, I think programming language design and implementation has, has become a bit more fashionable in the academic world. I think it, it's still a little down and, and it needs more, needs more love and attention. So if you want to make a dent, that's a good place to go. And I mean, all of us look back and we've made some changes and I have throttled in my head previous Java architects, but what do you think the three biggest mistakes that Java has made from the past? Java native serialization. The, 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 you know, the, the, the fact that you can make an object without going through its constructors, the file, you know, it's just like, but what? Um, back, back in the day, some of us tried to, tried to fight it. We failed. Sorry. Um, the fact that we didn't do a module system in 1998 uh, would have avoided a lot of pain, and, would have, and we wouldn't be, be having some of the drama we're having now. Uh, third, the fact that final fields are not really final which has inhibited a lot of, of advanced JVM optimizations. And that's something that o over time, now that we have a module system and we can get closer to, to ensuring that, over time we, ho we hope to make final really do mean final uh, and performance will improve a lot. Thank you. Uh, but that's Java. What was your biggest mistake? My and biggest you, mistake? And if you were able to talk to your younger self, what advice would you give to avoid it? Um, I, my, biggest, my biggest mistake was I stopped playing piano. Uh, why does that matter? Uh, well, you know, we're, we're, we're all here because we're passionate about technology, but there's more to life than that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I started taking piano lessons when I was, I don't know, eight or so, and did it for four or five years, and then stopped. Other, other stuff was, you know, computers were more interesting, whatever. Um, and I realized not that long after that, you know, music is actually really important to, to me in a deep, deep way. And, you know, I've always listened to it passionately and, and intensely, but... I, I, I felt this loss that I've been <laughs> too busy now for decades to correct, but I hope to correct soon, of not being able to, to, to make music. It's, I think, a deeply important thing. Interesting. But you've had a pretty enviable career. And I, epic, I've, I've, been, I've been lucky. There's, you but, know, being in the right place at the right time. But for you, what's <laughs> next? Where are you, where are you heading? Uh, well, I, I hope to be working on Java for a while yet. Um, uh, but uh, if, if and when I'm done with that, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably retire to the coast of Maine, the northeast U.S., build a sailboat out of wood. <laughs> uh, sail off into the sa distance. Sa <laughs> sail every day in the summer with, with my wife, um, play the cello every day, and uh, invent a programming language. How's that? Well, while we've still got you, I think we all still appreciate you, and uh, thank you very much for talking with me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <All right. clears throat>